website, criticalhealthnews.com, where there's a wealth of information and modular nutrition packages that have already changed many lives for the better. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, please check out the free health audios, videos, and articles at criticalhealthnews.com or call 1-855-949-RADIO. That's 1-855-949-7234. psychic in the medium john russell as we're talking about the other side john we were talking about the the death procedure when you die right what you can expect i'll let you finish that up well i think you know again we're speculating but uh from what i have been told by people on the other side uh once you make that transition you're aware that you're transitioning you're met by people on the other side guardian angels spirit guides whatever you want to call them uh, deceased loved ones deceased friends and you go ahead and make that transition, you're aware that you're there, you're aware that you've died. And so if you're coming back to a location, it doesn't mean you're earthbound, it means you're coming back for a purpose. Maybe you're wanting to watch over your daughter, or uh, wanting to watch over a friend, or wanting to see how a certain scenario plays out. And if you can influence that, or uh, put any kind of aid and assistance into that from the other side. So we still, you know, we retain all our awareness, all our memories, all our personality and everything. And then we continue to learn and find out what we can do on the other side. Now, since you've been doing this, which has been a long, long time. Oh, Lord, a long time. 50, 50 years now. What have you concluded about what the other side is all about? Is there a, is there a hell? You know, I have never experienced anything, um, and certainly not from anyone from the other side that I've communicated with, that would lead me to believe that. Uh, and, and again, you know, everything that we have about the other side mostly falls in the realm of speculation still, uh, because we just don't know. We don't have that great of communication. We don't have that great of an evidence. Um, but I don't see anything to convince me of a hell. I don't really see anything to convince me of a heaven either. Uh, you know, those come from religious writings, and religious writings are notoriously unreliable, and so I'm, I'm not convinced. No, not at all. Tell us about guardian angels. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, guardian angels, uh, I have gotten to an argument with somebody, or rather a discussion, I think, with somebody the other day about, uh, they were saying, well, guardian angels don't actually physically intervene. All they do is just guide us through impressions, intuitive warnings those types of things. They try and reach us through our intuition or maybe some type of sign, but they don't actually physically intervene. And I have to disagree with that completely because in my uh, personal experience, I've had several guardian angel interventions that actually occurred on the physical level. I'll give you one example, and they uh, range from this to literally life-saving. And for one example of a physical intervention, I was up on a stepladder when I was a kid, and I was, I was real... Uh, coordinated, I had good balance and, and good strength and everything. And I was up on this, uh, at the top of the step ladder, it was about four feet tall. And I was uh, doing a chore, hanging some curtain rods for the neighbors. They were old and, and needed help, and I was up there doing that for them. And uncharacteristically, I lost my balance and started to fall off the step ladder and fall back toward my left. Now, I wasn't afraid when I was falling because. I was very skilled in the martial arts. I had done all these spinning kicks. I knew judo. I'd done all this stumbling. And I knew that as I fell, if I just torqued my body to the right, my torso to the right, and then spun back to the left real hard as I fell, that I would spin around in the air and I could catch myself, land on my either my knees and my hands or my feet and my hands, and I'd be okay. Sure. And it was perfectly workable. I knew I could do it, so I wasn't afraid as I fell. But I was definitely falling. And just as I torqued back to the right to initiate that move, this large hand firmly pressed up against my lower hip and back and steadied me and pushed me back up on the ladder and held me till I got stable. And I turned around to say thank you, and there was not a single person in the flesh there in the room. So guardian angels absolutely do literally physically intervene and help us. Well, they sure do. And do they ever turn away from us? 
I, I don't know if they turn away from us. I think that it's uh, our inability to hear or our unwillingness to hear. You know, I tell everybody, look, you have to listen. And we don't listen. We're so plugged in all the time. We've got the radio going or the earbuds in or we're scrolling on the cell phone or we're watching TV or we're listening to music or we're involved in something on the, on the web. And we don't listen. You can't hear. You can't receive when you're not paying attention. And that's why we have moments of uh, meditation and things that are necessary to do is that's how we listen. That's how we hear. And then once we hear, we have to do what we're told. It doesn't do a bit of good to receive guidance if we ignore it. Do you believe in reincarnation, John? I don't know. For me, the jury's out on that. There have been a few, and I emphasize few, um, interesting examples that have been given that seem to indicate a little bit of something there, possibly. But then those kind of play out as the person grows up and develops and, and gets, uh, gets older, because these are usually cases that relate to kids. And I just haven't found anything there that I can hang my hat on yet. Uh, I'm not going to say it is, I'm not going to say it isn't, but I'm just saying for me, I haven't seen anything that would give me the evidence there that I need. Interesting take on that. Uh, I, I didn't think you were a believer of reincarnation. Some, some psychics are. Yeah, some psychics are, and, and again, they found something that for them uh, indicates that there's enough for them to hang their hats on. But I haven't found that yet. I, like I say, I've seen some, a few interesting th uh, things that emphasize few. How do we know the other side exists? We have testimony from people right. like you, of course. Right. You know, people have seen ghosts. People have, you know, it, but how do we know it's the real deal? Well, I think that we have to accept this fact that the other side exists from uh, reliable communication from the other side. Uh, for example, a person uh, who crosses over, then they come back to somebody such as a psychic like me, and during a reading for a person, they give them information where uh, I saw you at the cemetery and you put this little red statue of a frog on my tombstone. Um, you know, and there's, there's no way anybody could know that unless they are seeing that from the other side and then communicating it back. So we have to accept that as evidence. We have to believe in that. What other, what other explanation could there be? Uh, we have, for example, EBP which is electronic voice phenomenon, which is spirit voices coming through, and they've done enough research to validate that those are uh, voices coming through and it's not radio static or some type of interference or some type of other transmission. People hold two-way conversations with these voices. Um, we have spirit photography, uh, where you get images of ghosts, images of spirits, uh, images of nature spirits. Uh, we have interaction in the physical realm uh, with things that there's no physical uh, um, objective to initiate, that it has to be coming from some other uh, realm, some other energy, some other force. So we have to take those on faith as evidence that something exists beyond just this, just the physical and just what we know here. The goal of the paranormal is to do what? The goal of the paranormal for me has to be to experience this in a physical way to find out, hey, yes, this is real. Um, imagination is not reality. We can imagine all kinds of things, uh, for example, in meditation, and we can convince ourselves that we live this life or we did this thing or we're in communication with a certain sect of spirits or certain extraterrestrials or whatever, but that only exists in an imagination. I have not... Um, encountered very many people that claim these things that have any physical evidence whatsoever. And from my experiences, I have physical evidence. I have photographs. I have a video. I have audio recordings. And, and other people have witnessed these things as they have happened. And the goal of the paranormal is, should be physical experience. And the reason for that is if you're imagining something and you allow yourself to be carried off on this fanciful journey of imagination, you haven't produced anything real. You haven't done anything uh, any good for yourself. Uh, you haven't um, you haven't healed anyone. You haven't provided any advancement that anybody can use in any way. And that should be the goal of all uh, paranormal experience and paranormal investigation. We should be constantly striving to move forward to physically improve life for ourselves here on Earth. Uh, better methods of healing. Um, better understanding of the other side, 
of finding ways to press forward for peace and find some way to stop all the annihilation and the wars and the hatred of the world. Those should be physical goals. And people make the argument that, uh, well, you know, who's to say that these other realms aren't real and who's mm-hmm. to say that this isn't going on and that? Fine, but you still got to pay the bills. You still got to eat. <laughs> you still experience sickness and so on and so forth. We still have to solve the physical problems that we have living here in this physical realm. Well, with John Russell, his uh, couple books, Riding with Ghosts, Angels, and the Spirits of the Dead. The other is A Knock in the Attic, True Ghost Stories, and Other Spine-Chilling Paranormal Adventures. What about uh, Satan, the devil? Do you come across that at all? You know, I don't. Uh, there's, uh, I'm familiar with the demonologists and their theories and all this type of thing. And, George, let me tell you, I have done in my lifetime, oh, God, I, I can't count the number of paranormal investigations, uh, the number of clients I've read for thousands and thousands and thousands, and the number of physical paranormal manifestations I've had. And I have never encountered anything that I would say was a demon. Ever. Uh, and I, uh, on a recent U.K. podcast I was a, a featured guest on, one of the hosts said, only in America uh, is everybody obsessed with demons. Here they just think ghosts. <laughs> and I think that people judge and interpret paranormal manifestations by how they were raised. And if you were raised in a Christian environment, you know, the Bible acknowledges paranormality, but it acknowledges only its own. And anything outside of what the Bible sanctions then is evil or satanic or demonic or whatever. So you tend to view everything through those glasses. And I have never experienced anything that uh, actually was ever even malevolent or had a malicious intent in all of the encounters Mm. that I've had. So I I think that um, some people may interpret, misinterpret rather, uh, an, an experience or encounter that they have. Uh, for example, this one lady one time told me when I was filming a pilot um, for the uh, History Channel during a break in the filming, she said, I have to talk to you, I have to talk to you. And I said, okay. So we got off private. She said, a ghost tried to kill me. I said, no ghost tried to kill you. And she said, yeah, yeah. She said, I was in my kitchen, and from the cupboard, this plate comes flying across the room, crashes into the wall, shatters and falls down beside me. The ghost tried to kill me. I said, well, if the ghost tried to kill you, you'd be dead. And I said, uh, the, uh, the ghost was simply trying to get your attention, and you misinterpreted that as harm. And psychically, I perceived, and I told her, I said, the other side has been trying to get your attention and communicate with you for some time now. And there are some specific things that they want you to understand and that they want to, uh, you to utilize in your spiritual growth and development. And uh, they couldn't get your attention. So finally, it was like, ignore this. You're not going to be able to ignore this. And uh, so that, that made sense to her. And I think that a lot of experiences we had, uh, we misinterpret because people are afraid of, they've been taught to be afraid of these experiences. And they've been taught to be afraid of the other side. And they've been taught that if something happens uh, supernaturally, it's got to be demonic or it's got to be scary or it's got to be some evil unknown. And like I say, I have never encountered that in all these years. What is the reappearing dog toy story? Oh, man. <laughs> that was... People ask all the time, you know, about physical evidence of things disappearing and reappearing. Uh, we had a, um, my sister had a little dog. We had both moved back home to take care of my mother, who was becoming bit fast and ill. And we were both living there in this, the, the old home place, the big house there. And my sister had a couple of little dogs. One was chronically ill. And I had received, psychically, that the little dog was about to cross over. And it did. And uh, we, like a lot of people do, buried our pets on the property. We buried our pets in the backyard there. So when the little dog died, he had this uh, big, green, squeaky frog toy that he dearly, dearly loved. And my, he had this robe uh, that uh, my sister had given him that he loved to wrap things up in and play in and lay on and whatever. So he was a little bitty small dog, a little, little tiny dog. And my sister took... Uh, took and wrapped him up in that robe, and with him she put in that frog toy, and several wraps of the robe, so everything was totally, completely secured, no way anything could come out or fall out or get out or whatever. And then we dug a hole in the backyard, buried him, and then I even placed a, uh, a rock over the dirt until the grass started growing back around uh, so that no animal would dig him up or anything like that. So enough time had passed from the little dog's death and burial that the grass had completely grown back over the grave, and you wouldn't even know where it was at unless you knew where to look. So I had been out, I was 
walking around the neighborhood doing something, and I was coming back up our driveway. It was late evening, and a beautiful day, sunny, and uh, I was walking up the driveway, and I caught over there in the backyard something uh, on the on the ground there in the grass, and I looked over to see what it was, and it was that frog. And I couldn't believe it. I shook my head, and I walked over, and I looked, and sure enough, that was his frog toy that my sister had wrapped up with him in that robe, and we had buried him with. And I, I bent down, I pulled on the grass to see if the ground had somehow been loosened, if somebody dug, dug something up and was playing a practical joke or something. The ground was intact. <laughs> the grass was intact. Uh, somehow, this frog had, <laughs> had transmitted itself up from through the earth, through that cloth, up on top of the grave to let us know, hey, you know, there's either a sign from the little dog saying, hey, I'm still here, won't you know I'm still around, or some angel, guardian angel of the little dog helped it do that and give us that sign. And so I set it up on the steps to my sister's apartment there that was attached to the house where I knew she would see it when she came home, and I went inside. And uh, I heard the car pull in the driveway, and the engine cut off, and I didn't hear the door. And I was like, yeah, I know what's happening. And she's seen that frog, and she's, I'm hallucinating. She's out there shaking her head before she opens the, the car door to get out. So finally so I heard the, the car door, and she come running through the apartment, come running into the house. She goes, did you see this? And I said, yeah, I'm the one that found it and, and put it up on the steps. And she said, this is impossible. This can't be. And she went over. She checked the grave and to see if the ground had been disturbed or, you know, the grass had been dug up and replaced or whatever. And, of course, everything was solid. So uh, the other side does have the ability to, to dramatically manipulate physical objects. And uh, they can make things appear. They can make things disappear. They can make things come up through the earth. And I've experienced episodes like that several times. And I think the, the takeaway that we get there, the lesson that we get there is, hey, this is real. And if we pay attention to it, you know, the other side can guide us, can help us. It, it's not a, a uh, claw toy where you put in your money and, oh, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to get that. And the other side is not like that. Uh, you know, we don't get everything we want. But if we pay attention, we do get spiritual advancement. We do get protection. We do get evidence. And I think that's the lesson there. All right, John, we're going to come back with you in a moment and take phone calls. John's website, johnrussell.net, linked up at coasttocoastam.com. Up next, your calls about the paranormal on Coast to Coast AM. Find out more about tonight's guest. Log on to coasttocoastam.com. drinking more, more water at home, and instead of reaching for that plastic water bottle, how about filling any glass or reusable bottle with filtered water straight from any tap in your house? That's the Life Source Whole House Water Filtration System. No more filter changes or exchange tanks. If you have hard water, that'll help. And a Life Source Water System gets rid of the odor and taste of chlorine, no salt, no chemicals. Keep in mind, you're bathing, showering, washing dishes, washing clothes in this filtered water. They provide a customized water solution for your home, installation, customer service support. 37 years in Southern California, and now, the July 4th celebration, LifeSource will pay your sales tax through July 9th. LifeSourceWater.com, call 800-334-5009, 800-334-5009. Visit LifeSourceWater.com, LifeSourceWater, taste and feel the difference. Hey, California, did you hear about the big vaccine incentives program? You Call the Shot California gives $50 incentive cards for things like groceries or shopping at your favorite small business to the next 2 million Californians who begin and complete their vaccination against COVID-19. Make that vaccine appointment today at myturn.ca.gov or call 833-422-4255. Get Vax for the win, people. It's a win-win for you and California. Vaccinated Californians ages 12 and up are eligible. Visit COVID-19.ca.gov to learn more. 
Brian Sharp here. Nothing disrupts your life, your comfort, even your safety like a power outage. And outages are the new normal. So now is the time to set up your home with an emergency generator from Duffy Power. Duffy is Southern California's generator experts. And with 0% interest financing, emergency power totally affordable. Duffy Power, making sure your life, your comfort, and your safety are not to be interrupted. Dial pound 250 on your cell and say Duffy Power. Pound 250, Duffy Power, or on the web at DuffyPower.com. KFI AM 640. For the KFI listeners who think for themselves, every day is Independence Day. KFI AM 640, Los Angeles, Orange County. And KOST HD2. It's 5 a.m. What did you miss? It's time for Wake Up Call with Jennifer Jones Lee. Especially good. Why, you ask? Because it's Friday, of course. But also, because it's the Friday before a holiday weekend, and not just any holiday weekend. Yeah, sure, it's the 4th of July. One of my faves, I got it. But because it's one of the first holidays where I feel like we're going to get out and be kind of normal. We get to go to fireworks shows. We get to have people over. It's... I don't know. I'm really looking forward to it. Are you? I hope so. This is KFI AM 640 Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. On the 2nd of July, here's what we're watching on your wake-up call. The ATF's national response team is on the scene of that massive illegal fireworks explosion that happened when the LAPD's bomb squad was trying to destroy some IEDs in South LA. The recall election of Governor Newsom? Yep, we have a date now. September 14th. And the Department of Health in L.A. County is very concerned about the spread of this COVID-19 Delta variant. But it seems that it is within a specific group of people. So we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. But let's start with some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The ATF's national response team is on the scene of that massive illegal fireworks explosion in South L.A., The team will dig deep into the cause of the explosion which destroyed the LAPD's total containment vehicle. It also knocked a car onto its side, busted out windows, and sent shrapnel up to three blocks from the scene. Monique Villegas is the ATF's special agent in charge for L.A. and says the national response team's made up of explosives and fire specialists. They're veterans. They come from all over the country, and um, they will assess the scene. The explosion happened Wednesday night as LAPD bomb squad techs were trying to destroy a stash of improvised explosives designed to look like fire. Fireworks. At least 17 people were injured. Steve Gregory, KFI News. L.A. City Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez says the city's first fireworks buyback program has seen more than a quarter ton of illegal fireworks being taken off the streets. Under the program, people have been able to turn in their fireworks and get tickets to Dodger Games, passes for Universal Studios, and gift cards to a number of retailers. Rodriguez says the fireworks buyback idea is based on L.A.'s gun buyback program. And I have to wonder, I have to wonder if they would have seen that many fireworks if we hadn't had these recent stories about illegal fireworks going off. We had that one in Ontario. We've got this one now where it it wasn't necessarily fireworks, but that the ATF is responding to in South L.A. that just blew the top off of a containment vehicle. And I wonder if people are thinking to themselves, eh, you know, the fireworks are fun and all, but I don't want to be a victim of something like that. Eh, maybe, maybe. Rather go to a Dodger game. Rather go to Universal Studios. The CHP has given the green light to a maximum traffic enforcement crackdown that would take away a driver's independence this 4th of July weekend. We just want people to be safe. Southern Division Officer Ramondo Alexander says patrols will be scouring freeways with a special focus on the five. We all have to do our part by observing the speed limit, avoiding distractions, staying sober, practicing patience, and being courteous to other drivers. The CHP says last 4th of July weekend, more than 36 people were killed in car crashes and 738 people were arrested for DUI despite pandemic restrictions. The enforcement starts tonight and runs through Monday night. In L.A., Corbin Carson, KFI News. The recall election of Governor Newsom has been set for September 14th. California's lieutenant governor set the date once election officials certified that enough valid signatures had been turned in to qualify the recall effort for the ballot. 
Health Director Barbara Ferrer says she's concerned about the rapid spread of the COVID-19 Delta variant. Ferrer says 47% of all new cases in L.A. County have a Delta strain. Our recommendation to wear masks indoors will help press pause on viral transmission while we learn more. Ferrer says she's also worried about vaccinated people who become infected with the virus because they could transmit it to others. She says of the 4.5 million fully vaccinated people in the county, more than 2,100 have become infected two weeks or more after their vaccination. California's Attorney General has put up a red flag over gun sales. 2020 saw the largest year-over-year -year increase in handgun sales ever for California and the second highest jump for long guns. Legal gun sales do not automatically equate to a violent incident. But AG Rob Bonta says when shootings happen, there are often signs beforehand, and with more guns owned, he says people should be more aware of red flag laws. These laws can be a proactive tool to help prevent gun violence, but they are not being used enough. He says people can ask the court for a temporary restraining order if someone threatens violence to themselves or others. Chris and Carlo, KFI News. When we come back, we'll talk with ABC's Tom Rivers because the head of the World Health Organization in Europe is warning of a third wave of COVID-19 infections. So we'll find out from Tom if he's warning this. So is that a prediction or is he saying that that is inevitable? We'll find out in just a second. Right now, let's take a look at your drive. Hi, Robin Banks. Happy Friday to you. Good morning. Thank you. Happy Friday. Let's go to Hollywood on the 101 North at Normandy. We're part of a three-car crash. It's in the middle traffic lane, slowing through the area, so it's not uh, a huge delay as yet. Down to Los Angeles on the 110 uh, north, southbound, right at 8th Street. Car lost a tire and then came to a stop on the off-ramp, so watch that off-ramp down to Los Angeles. Cerritos, 91 West at Norwalk Boulevard, stalled motorcycle up against the center divider. Rider is there as well. Picking up the, in Pomona, 71 South between Mission and uh, the uh, and the Pomona Freeway. All those lanes were closed overnight. They're picking up the cones right now. Your traffic will uh, recover soon. And Montclair on the 10 eastbound between Monte Vista and Euclid. The two right lanes are closed until 6. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Robin Banks. 506 on your wake-up call, KFI AM 640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Tom Rivers, good morning to you. Let's talk about uh, the statement from the World Health Organization about a third wave of COVID-19 cases. Is this a prediction or is this an inevitability? I think it's an inevitability. We've seen this before and uh, the only thing different this time, we got a different variant. We got the Delta variant, which we talked about it for the past couple of weeks, which originally came from India, and is more transmissible. And it's the same race that we've been seeing played out here in the UK. A little different, though. We've got uh, at least one shot in an arm of each adult here. 85% of adults here have had one. Only about 33% on the continent, you throw in all the countries together, have had one shot. So they're not in as good a position to deal with this variant. So, yeah, uh, it is going to be coming. question is, you know, how well will the population deal with it? Probably pretty well here in the U.K., probably not so good on the continent. And you have to wonder, too, then, if that's going to mean various restrictions coming in and out of the U.K. and things like that going forward, because they might say, hey, our people are good to go. We don't want people who are not yeah. coming in. Yeah, it's, I tell you, right here, right now, the next it's messy, and it changes by the day. You know, can I fly today? Just to, you know, what do I do? Am I five days of quarantine? No days of quarantine? Do I have the right papers? I've had two shots. You know, do you want, do you want a paper form or you want, a, you know, a digital form? It's as clear as mud. Uh, it will clear up, but uh, no, right now, messy, messy, messy. If you don't have to fly, don't do it. Now, and I, I want to talk to you about, it's interesting. I don't think that I realized it was as murky as it was there, as I feel like here we've been complaining about, you know, the CDC says one thing, the WHO says one thing, and then yeah. you have L.A. County Public Health saying something else. And uh, so I guess you guys are going through that, too, but it almost sounds like yours is even more restrictive than ours is. Yeah, and of course, you know, we got, for instance, we got the traffic light system. Green countries, you can go and do whatever you want. Not many countries are on the green list. Then you got the amber list, which is so, you know, well, you, you shouldn't go, but you can go. But uh, you got to have some shots when you leave. You got to you know, go to your other country, come back. Uh, depending how things go, you got to get another test. Uh, if things go south, you have to quarantine, self isolate, whatever. And then there's some red countries where they're just saying, nope, stay away. 
don't don't even think about it. Uh, we're not going to let you off the plane. So yeah, it's it's messy and it changes by the week. Uh, which countries are on? Which ones are off? Portugal's been like a yo-yo. Oh, they're on the good list. They're on the, not on the good list. And people have been trapped. And then they go, well, when I flew last week, you know, I could fly home. Go, Gee, I better get home by Tuesday. Otherwise, I have to quarantine. Uh, it's really screwing up people's lives over here. Okay, what about travel, say, uh, just for other countries around the world? Can we get there? What, what kinds of things would an American face? Because I know that we are all clamoring to go somewhere right now. And we're thinking, yep. hey, Europe's great. We didn't get to go last year. Let's redo that trip that we got, you know, screwed out of. In theory, I think in the very, very short period of time, they'll say, yep, if you're an American, you can come on over. Uh, you either probably will need a, you know, either a, a negative recent test or documentation that, yes, I did have you know, uh, COVID you know, X number of months ago, or I have had two shots. But again, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be messy. Case in point, we have a football game, a soccer game on Saturday in Rome, right? Um, and the vaccination rates are real, real high here in the UK. The latest from the authorities in Italy, they say if you're flying in from uh, the UK for this match against Ukraine on Saturday, even if you have a ticket in your hand, you're not going to be allowed in a stadium. So, you know, people, they're making it up as you go. You know, it's like, you know, can I walk down the street today? I don't know. Let's turn on the news and find out. Uh, it's real messy. What, do you, do, what are your fines or punishments if you get caught and you're violating some of these orders? Yeah, well, if you're flying from a, from a wrong country, you can face something like uh, 5,000 pounds, which is like about, what, $6,000. Uh, but in secrecy, too, there have been violations over the uh, past, what, 14, 15 months here? I think around uh, up and down the country, about 300 of them. Uh, and in the court system, all of them, all of them have been thrown out. They're like, you know, getting together with too many people uh, at a concert or something. They've all been thrown out. So it's like, what's going on here? Um, is this some kind of a joke or what? I yeah. can't find, but guess what? Further down the road, uh, they're not prosecuting anyone. Um, <laughs> well, it's really, welcome to the rabbit hole. And uh, we, we keep going down further each and every day. I guess so. Tom, uh, I kind of feel like I need to wish you good luck. That's crazy. <laughs> we got Freedom Day coming up uh, the 19th of this month. For the last of the lockdown, the measures will be lifted. <laughs> Fingers crossed uh, we don't have to revert back on any. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, it should be. It's going to be one heck of a party. Let's put it that way. Sounds like your 4th of July. I like it. <laughs> okay. Hey, you have a good 4th, too. Hey, thanks, Tom. You, too. See you later. That's ABC's Tom Rivers. What a mad man. You know, when I start complaining about what's going on in L.A. County and you guys can't get your facts straight and you're different than the CDC and the CDC, you're different than the WHO. Wow, am I glad I'm not there in the U.K. Wow, what a... And, and I wonder if you didn't know... I can't walk down the street today. Uh, the quarantine period is five days today. I thought it was none before. I thought it was ten before. Whatever. Can you plead ignorance? But at the same time, Tom's absolutely right. If there is no stickable punishment, if there's nothing that's going to stick, then are a lot of people going to go, I don't care. They're just going to come slap me on the wrist, hand me a piece of paper. That means nothing get back to some of the stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. Wildfires in Northern California have burned dozens of homes and buildings and forced thousands of people to leave communities, mainly in the mountains. Authorities say wildfires near Mount Shasta Volcano have burned about 50 square miles of land. The biggest fire is in Siskiyou County. That's where 3,500 people have had to leave their homes. The Justice Department is putting a pause on federal executions. ABC's Andy Field says... The pause follows a historic use of capital punishment by the Trump administration, which carried out 13 executions in six months. Before President Biden took office, President Trump ended a nearly two decades pause in federal executions. Attorney General Merrick Garland now reversing that policy by putting a temporary hold on them. 
The Justice Department says it will use the pause to do a review of its execution policies and procedures. President Biden said he's against the federal death penalty and he wants it to end. A new poll shows more Americans see crime at being at a 20-year high. The poll shows 48% of people surveyed disapprove of how President Biden is helping reduce crime. 38% approve of what he's doing. Well, I want to talk about the fireworks this weekend. And specifically, I want to talk about the pyrotechnics world overall. And no, this isn't a story about the what not to do. It's a story about a guy that I want to do more and more and more when it comes to fireworks. His name is Jim Souza, and he's from Pyro Spectaculars in Rialto. And you can only imagine what the year must have been like for him. I mean, his bread and butter is fireworks, and all the fireworks shows last year were canceled. So what did he do, and what's he doing this year? We'll talk with him in just a second. Right now, let's take a look at your drive on the 101. We're looking at Echo Park this time on the uh, 101 southbound just before Alvarado. It's a solo car spin out. Somebody hit the center divider, bounced back into the left lane. They stopped all the